Can you summarise why the Climate Change Act was significant when it was brought into law? Okay, the, the Climate Change Act was a really innovative piece of legislation. And the, the, the fundamental uh, core of it was that it makes the Secretary of State, whoever they are in the future, uh, responsible for ensuring, uh, in, in a statutory way, responsible for ensuring that the UK reduces its carbon emissions by 80% by 2050, and indeed following a trajectory that is uh, dictated by an independent body. Okay, and would you say that's been effective? in the 10 years it's been in force? Well, up until now, yes. The, uh, the UK's carbon emissions are 40% lower than they were in 1990 today. Um, partly, th there are a whole load of factors that contributed to that. Um, but at the same time, the economy is growing by 60%. So one of the big results is that the myth that you cannot decarbonize without damaging the economy has been blown out of the water. It's clear that you can. Okay. And where does this place Britain in the context of climate action compared with other countries? Well, from the uh, government and statutory point of view, it, it places the UK well in the lead. It's a very innovative uh, piece of legislation, which many other nations are uh, considering following. I know, I know Spain and others have been looking at it, uh, because it's seen as a way of overcoming the um, four or five yearly electoral cycle. It, it commits a nation to a long-term <laughs> set of actions. So it's been highly beneficial. Okay, brilliant. And do you think it's stood the test of time? Yes, I think it has. Um, the uh, Climate Change Committee, which was established as the independent body um, to lay out the trajectory that the country needs to follow, and the Adaptation Subcommittee, which has been looking at the nation's preparedness for the climate change, which is inevitably happening around us now, have both been uh, are both very prestigious bodies. They're they're regarded even in uh, the day where experts are suspect. They're regarded as being um, uh, rigorous and um, uh, you know having done a very effective job. So it's established a uh, process um, which I think by and large is admired. Um, what it reveals though is that there are many areas where um, government action or national action is still um, lagging. And, right. uh, but nevertheless, we have a, an independent and rigorous means of exposing that. And once you've exposed the problem, then of course you can begin to address it. Do you think uh, 10 years on, there are areas now where you think, oh, well, that could be tightened up or this could be improved upon? I mean, has, has, has there elements that have changed? I, I, I think in terms of the act itself and the uh, process and structures that have been set up to support it, I think they've stood the test of time. What we see now is the, the actual um, action on the ground is not keeping up in many areas. So for example, although there are some very good uh, examples of uh, flood protection plans, say for the London floodplain, for example, there are, we know that there are many other areas around the country which are um, very poorly prepared for sea level rise flooding or the intense rainfall flooding that we're already experiencing. So um, there's, there's plenty to do. You just said that we've got a plan for maybe the London floodplain, okay. but if you go to other parts of the UK, yeah. and are those plans being put into, you know... Yeah, it's very patchy. It, it, you know, there's some good examples. There are some areas where there's um, really uh, insufficient knowledge and action. And, and you know, the, the present administration has uh, definitely not helped. Um, for example, um, there had been a, a long process um, by which uh, zero carbon home uh, legislation was being prepared. Um, the, the new administration abandoned that, and when they did so, they also removed the ability of local councils uh, to impose on developers conditions um, for the development that would make sure that the developments are future-proofed, you know, uh, climate-proofed. Um, and so a huge opportunity was lost um, to ensure that at the, at the level, the local level, action, appropriate action was being taken. And, and uh, if you talk to local councils now or boroughs, um, the, the austerity and the cutbacks have so reduced their um, staffing that often you'll find that there is nobody responsible for climate change at all. So if one has a new uh, report that provides some useful advice, there is literally nobody to send it to because there's nobody in the borough um, administration.
administration who is assigned that task. And do you think, I mean, the, the current administration has more recently been making quite a few environmental noises. Uh, yes, do, uh, well, I, the, the, in DEFRA, the, the minister, Claire Perry, is, is, he, you know, is, is on top of her brief and very committed. So, and, uh, it, it, you know, Mr. Gove is making the, the right sort of noises. Um, so, it's, it's, as I say, it's very patchy. You see some you know, very good things, you see some less good things. Okay, so, but I was cu curious whether it might be making a lot of noise but not actually making a lot of action. Well, we don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, you know the, the, the cynic in me says, uh, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. Um, but, but we have to be, you know, there are good signs because the markets are uh, beginning to have an effect. Um, in two ways. First, the uh, green technology, you know, the, the experience curves, the costs of solar PV and, uh, and wind have, have so plummeted, so much faster than was expected, um, that they are um, cost competitive with fossil fuels in many parts of the world, but also uh, in, in, in um, uh, the UK. So we see um, the kind of baseload delivery of, uh, of green energy increasing. I mean, we've been through periods where coal contributed nothing to the, the UK um, electricity supply for sort of a, a couple of days on end. Um, but in addition, uh, large investment companies, so pension funds and so on, are increasingly nervous of um, potential carbon bubbles and stranded assets. Um, and so you can see, you know, the huge super tanker is probably a very good metaphor. You can see the nose in, ineluctably beginning to move towards a green and clean future almost despite of uh, what the government may do. Are there signs you can see that change is happening at the speed we need to see it to avert the worst of climate impacts? Uh, are, the, are the signs that we see things happening? Well, yes, we do see things happening, but absolutely not at the scale or pace that is necessary if we're serious about keeping uh, the overall warming to about two degrees uh, centigrade or less. Um, we are currently on a track to three, three and a half, maybe even four degrees centigrade at the end of the century. Um, and we may have gone over a threshold where we have um, committed the earth to rising sea levels of um, many meters over hundreds, if not thousands of years. So um, certainly the actions that we all collectively take over the next decade or two will determine the, the trajectory of the planet for thousands of years. And I absolutely do not see uh, the, the scale and pace that's necessary um, to achieve the aspirations, which is two degrees of warming maximum and a planet that stabilizes in the next century or so. I mean, you've had a lot of experience, uh, obviously, with bass and, and so on. And when we talk about many meters of sea level rise, I mean, this is this is a game changer for civilization, isn't it? Yes, um, yes. British Antarctic Survey and, and of course, all of the uh, polar scientists, uh, you know, have many contributions to uh, understanding how the planet works. Antarctica is a big and important piece of the planetary machinery. It's the air conditioning system or the water conditioning system, um, and at present, it's it's not the major contributor to the sea level rise that we're measuring now. That's coming from thermal expansion of the ocean as it warms and from Greenland and uh, glaciers, uh, you know, on, on mountains around the world. But, but a paper came out last week that shows that the contribution of Antarctica to sea level rise tripled in the last five years. So it's beginning to accelerate. Um, and some years ago, I likened the Antarctic to um, a slumbering giant and said that there were signs of its awakening. And uh, more recently, I said, I think it's beginning to stretch its limbs and we should be very nervous about what's happening down there. Right. Um, <laughs> I think you're, you're answering every question <laughs> one in advance. Okay. When, when you, you don't, we might skip this. Yeah. When you consider the climate timeline of action versus impacts, what concerns you the most? Well, um, let, let's talk about impacts. Um, the, the, what we're seeing is that climate change is happening now. It, this is not some abstract thing that's going to happen to people in, you know, other people somewhere else in the future. It's happening right now. So there's a wonderful book that's just come out called uh, The Water Will Come by a journalist called Jeff Goodall, which I recommend. And he's done a wonderful job really investigating, you know, Florida and uh, Venice and uh, all of the obvious places that um, uh, sea level rise is, is going to impact. 
and there are people in Miami who are making decisions now about whether to send, sell their condominium now before the prices collapse or perhaps keep it and sell it to low and rent it to low income people and finally uh, let it uh, let it go at zero value so so people are seeing that climate change is happening around them and they're reacting to it one of the more controversial um, aspects of climate change is that there is evidence that it is driving migration already and of course it's it's migration probably more than anything else that will be so disruptive uh, in the future climate refugees from areas that are too hot yet where crops fail from areas that are flooded either through sea level flooding or whatever or through areas that no longer have a water supply because the the winter system of snowfall that sits on the top of the mountains and then delivers water through the summer you know from the Himalayas or the Alps or wherever it is no longer functions so um, very large numbers of people will move and we've seen the uh, the destabilizing effect that that has on Europe um, of course the migrants we're seeing in Europe aren't solely driven or even largely driven by climate change although there is a climate change component but that threat multiplier is the really serious uh, uh, consequence of climate change and we're beginning to see that happen and it's only going to get worse and, and that could cause very very unpleasant uh, social consequences. Okay. Um, in the struggle to communicate the challenges of climate change what gives you the most strength? Strength? Ah, okay. Well, the, the, the fact that um, a large percentage, although not all of people, um, are gen genuinely um, what you might call communalistic. That is, they believe that there is such a thing as society, despite what we're told. Um, and they are outraged by injustice. Um, and they are concerned about the future of their children and their children's children, and indeed other people's children's children. So uh, what I see is a, a willingness on the part of people to uh, bond together and act if only they understood what it is that they can do. So the strength is that there's a willingness out there. The weakness is that it's very difficult to offer people agency in a way that is effective. But, the, but as I, what I say to people is, you know, uh, and indeed, uh, you know, personal, professional and political you can organize your own life so that it's low carbon you can work within you know amongst your colleagues uh, assuming you have a job um, and often do uh, much more that way but the political pressure is where people can really make a difference you know keeping the pressure on elected representatives to recognize that this is an issue that needs action